Hi guys, we're back at Smart Fishing. It's currently midnight and we're going out foraging. We're going to a spot that I've only been to twice. And there's a big reef in the bay that I actually want to go check out because I've never been there. So hopefully we can find some bass, maybe a lobster if we're lucky, or even some clams and scallops. So who knows? So see what we can get. It's Smart Fishing, baby. Woo! It's a bit nicer than I thought down here. I expected 30 mile an hour winds and it's actually really sheltered from the uh, from the cliffs I've got next to me. The birds are going crazy down here, so good chance we're going to see some bass tonight. I haven't foraged this spot a great deal, so uh be interesting to see what we get down here. I came, I think I've been here twice before, but I only searched sort of quarter of this bay. So we're going to do the whole thing tonight. We've got a 0 0.8 tide, which is a very big tide this time, so let's see what we can get. It's going to be an interesting forage. I see a lobster tail just here. There you go. <laughs> Little baby lobster. We've only been down here literally a minute. You see his tail just sticking out the hole there. That's lovely to see that. Little lobster in the first five minutes. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a keeper. We're in a giant causeway at the moment and that tide's screaming out of here. So what I'm doing is I'm just marching my way down with the tide because often you'll catch the bass the lobsters and everything leaving with it so it's a great tip i like never go into fast moving water but just stay on the edge of it and creep down ah, yes i nearly walked past it <laughs> i just caught this monster just walking around in the shallows and that's what i was talking about guys look at the size of this bloody lobster excuse my french Oh yeah, that is a beauty. Wow, I just caught it in the corner of my eye and look at that. What an absolute chunker. I was actually looking for bass in the shallows here and just walking around the streams and shabam. Look at the size of that buster. Massive solid lobster. Oh, you beauty. Let's get some bands on this bad boy. <laughs> I did not expect that. I was like stuttering trying to get the camera on because I couldn't believe my eyes. Look at the size of that. You beauty. Let's hopefully get some more. Come on. That is a warrior. Look at that compared to my hand. You absolute diamond. That is definitely what we're after. I forgot my lobster banding tool today, so it's back to the old electrical tape. What a lobster, though. That is an absolute beast. Last thing I want is this thing biting me. It's going to be a very sorry day if it did. Yeah, one done. Oh, I can't believe that. I just turned around. I was just walking my way through really slowly and I just looked down to my left and it was just walking down the stream trying to get out the tide. Oh, that's so cool. This is why I love foraging. You just never know. Hopefully, this is a sign of things to come and we start getting a few. That there is a prime lobster. Absolute prime lobster. All right, let's get it in the foraging bag. Let's go get some more. Woohoo! <laughs> Did not expect a lobster that big. <laughs> not an absolute giant lobster, but for a male, as prime as they come. Perfect eating size. And you're going right in my foraging bag. <laughs> There we go. He's going to sit like that. I'm going to put some seaweed in there as well. Just to keep him cold. Because we've got two hours of the tide going down yet. And it's going to go as, it's going to go a seriously long way down. Be nice if we get a few more like that. I'm walking a little bit slower now. Just being a little bit more vigilant. I can feel the winds building as well. Because we've got a storm on the way. It's going to make it a lot more interesting. Can't beat a good old storm. It's a dugout burrow just here. I've 
isn't it? That's what the lobsters do, see, when the tide rushes out like this, if they can't escape the tide, they will dig under a, under a stone or, or a giant boulder, or they go into the cracks of the rocks. That's sort of their retreat mechanism. There's a bass, guys. There you go. Oh, I missed him. Where's he gone? Oh, well, he's gone. That's the second bass I've seen tonight. They're so quick. <laughs> That's the thing, you can see bass, doesn't mean you're gonna get them. I'm on a proper little surf beach here. <laughs> this is well cool. Haven't seen any more bass yet. But like, this is a proper little sandy bay, it's tiny. But look how clean that sand is. I'm just looking around for a flatfish or something. What a cool little night. Loaded up with a big lobster straight away. We've seen bass. We're adventuring into new grounds. Gonna start heading to a different spot now, guys. I've walked, I've walked a long way. <laughs> I don't know how long, I've, I've been walking for about best part of half an hour looking around and the grounds like this, it's just become very barren. So I'm going to head back the way I was and then go over the other side and hopefully we can find some better ground. This is such good foraging ground. Like you see, you've got these giant boulders and a mix of reef and sand, but like it's all stretched out over a long period. This is brilliant foraging ground. Definitely going to be coming here a lot more. But at the moment, we've, I've probably seen about six bass, but they've all been sort of a pound and a half, two pound. I've seen no decent fish yet. There must have been an oyster bed round here. Never seen this before. It's cool. This is where they would have grown oysters back in the day. What a cool structure. Let's see if there's any basils around it. <laughs> little lady crab. I felt something fighting the hook. I thought it was a little lobster, but a feisty little lady crab. Not, not finding a huge amount at the moment. The green sea urchin. So it's got green on the inside with lovely purple tips. I always like finding these. You usually find them under the rock. This one was just sat in there like that. Cozy little hobby hole. <laughs> I've come back up the beach here now, guys. We're going to head to another bay. Not very long away, about a five minute ride. We've still got an hour of the tide left, and I, I wasn't finding much. So I uh, decided to pack up. Decided to cut my losses. We're gonna go forage in another beach. Did I get him? Yeah, I got one. What is it? As soon as I got here. Oh, look at that for a bass. <laughs> oh, what a perfection in miniature right there. Look at that. Tiny little bass. It's beautiful to see though. Lovely little fish. I could see loads of them in the shallows here. I thought they were mullet at the start, but they looked a bit weird. So. Turns out, they're little bass. No lobsters in there, but look at that. <laughs> I didn't even see that until the last minute. Look at this. Sitting in the corner of the rock, there's a lobster hole here. Oh, we've just found a scallop. You beauty. That's well in legal size, that. As uh, JP would do is put his hand on it. That's well over four inches. Beauty. Got a nice scallop there. Hopefully we can get a few more of these. Nice size crab there. Brown edible crab or shanker they're known as. Don't find a lot of really big ones because they like to live in the deep. 
But on the very big tides, occasionally you do find some. But that's not big enough for us. Yeah, I got him. What's this one? Another species of the night. Is it a... There you go. Might be a golden grey that, or a thick lip mullet. Pretty little fish though. I love looking around all the little, little species that come in shore. Because obviously it's the bass breeding season right now. So you're going to get a lot of small ones and different species coming in. Nice Venus clam there. Don't really find a lot anymore of these little clams because there's so many gilt heads that's inhabited the, the channel islands now. That uh, I've, I've noticed it on all of the beaches. A lot of this style clam and like the Docinia clams, they're disappearing. So I take it, well, the ones that are buried are obviously doing well, but any that are on the surface, I used to find hundreds of them. And now, I, I, it's very rare for me to actually see one alive. Really interesting. The gilt heads are turned up, the shell munches, and the shells are disappearing. <laughs> Building a little fortress there. Gilt head's gonna have that for a snack later. Little shore crab. Feisty little crabs they are. Just not as bad as the lady crabs. Or velvet swimmers. As I was talking about, not many clams I find anymore. Check this out. I've just found an absolute monster. <laughs> That's a beauty. That's called the warty Venus clam. That is a big one as well. They don't get a huge amount bigger than that. What a cool species. So you've got Venus clam and the warty Venus clam. The shell on these are super thick and solid. That's probably why he survived the gilt head rampage. So stick him in like that, put his friend there. Hopefully they survive. I've decided guys, the tide's coming up so quick now. Uh, I'm not going to find anything else. So I'm going to put the scallop back. Usually I'd want like two or three at least to keep scallops. And we got a lovely lobster that we found at the start of the trip as well. So I'm just going to leave that there. There's no point me taking it just for the sake of it. And I've got a big juicy male lobster like that. Absolute beauty. So I'll see you in the kitchen, guys. Look at the claw on that. That's one of the biggest lobsters I've foraged in a while. It's always hard to gauge the size of stuff on camera because these, these GoPros and stuff are magnified, so waves look smaller. The lobsters look smaller as well. That's the best part of a kilo. It's definitely over a kilo, that, that lobster. Probably two and a half pounds. I was so surprised to find that today in the stream. I'm glad I did, because I didn't find much more after that, apart from a few little bits. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to boil the lobster. Doesn't even fit in the bowl. That's the size lobster you want. That's a prime male lobster, that one. So I've got a load of ingredients here today. And I've got some, uh, some little nacho chips. So what we're going to do is get some ingredients all cooked together. And we're going to put them on some nachos. It's going to be absolutely delicious, all that lobster. All I'm putting in this, got peppers, mushrooms, some red onion, some lime, some lemon. Good old sweet chilli sauce, some chorizo sausage, a big old Larry lobster, and some compound butter. And that's all I'm going to do is just cook all this together, get it all fried up nicely, and that will go over the chips for a nice delicious tea time snack.
So I'm just doing a little bit of each. So it's only me eating this. So we've got our mushrooms, got a little bit of red pepper. And I, I'm not really fussing with this. I'm literally just chopping it up. Some nice little cubes there to pick up with the chips. So I want a little bite-sized pieces. This is gonna give it a really nice smoky flavor. I'm just gonna dice this up into loads of nice little pieces now. As you can see, really not being fussy with this. Don't want too much onion in there. That's our red onion all chopped up. That will all break down and whittle down to not much. As you can see, we're getting a nice little selection of ingredients here. So all that's left really is just to crack the lobster up, get that meat out, and we're good to go. So I've picked our lobster now, guys. We've got a big old juicy piece of meat out of that. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll chop this up into fine pieces soon. But what I'm going to do is cook down our ingredients. In goes our little compound butter. That's just got parsley, black pepper, salt and Guernsey butter. That garlic is smelling delicious. I want quite big chunks of lobster so you actually want a nice bite out of it just like that, little squares and I won't throw that in until all of our ingredients are all cooked through, sweated down nicely and that's when our lobster goes in while I'm at it we've got some green jalapenos let's get some of those in there no, a bit of spice will go lovely in this. That will do for me, but obviously you could do that to your own taste. We're gonna hit it with some white pepper. Oh yeah, Himalayan pink sea salt. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of thyme in there. Get that all sweated down nicely, guys. And our lobster is nearly ready. This looks absolutely delicious. Nice and simple as well. So that there is a big ball of flavour. Gonna go in with some oh no. Let's just take that bit out. Oops. I was gonna say let's go in with a little bit of black pepper, but we got a lot in there. I don't mind black pepper though. Luckily it's only me eating. <laughs> Time to add some lobster. There we go. Plenty of lobster meat in there. This is a big mix up this is. Oh yeah. that for some nachos a little bit of cheese on top i don't like a lot of cheese with seafood so i only want a little bit if you some people drown stuff in cheese i think it's disgusting but look at that that to me is heaven what i'm gonna do just a bit of sweet chili sauce over the top just to add to it and that's my tea just for me <laughs> I do say so myself. That looks amazing. Yeah. 
having nachos with a ginger beer. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. I've always wanted to do something like this, but just never got around to it. Mm. Oh wow, that is good. That is really good. Mmm. Okay. The Mexicans know how to eat them. <laughs> this is delicious. Absolutely delicious. You get a nice little spice from the uh, jalapenos as well, or jalapenos, however you want to say, say them. Mmm. That's something else. Big balls of lobster in it. Oh. I reckon a little bit of honey in there just for a bit more sweetness. That would have been amazing. Oh, look at that. I don't know why I haven't done this sooner. Mmm. Yeah, this is definitely my thing. This is absolutely delicious. I don't even want to talk this time, I really don't. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. Mmm. I've outdone myself on this one. Oh, because you got that spice with the chorizo as well. You get that smoky flavour with a bit of uh, bit of spice, and then you can get that black pepper. The amount I put in was probably actually good because it's heating it up a bit more. I think. I think that's why I'm enjoying it more. I think it's the black pepper. That's good to know. A bit more extra black black pepper makes the food taste better. Mmm, that's so good. And check this out, guys. Pick up a big old nacho chip. Look at that. That is to die for. That is absolutely to die for. Oh, what a cool trip as well. Went to the new area. I found like, I found a, like a, a patch where it was really good ground and I found a few bass that just could not net them for the life of me. But um, apart from that, the sandy beach, I couldn't find anything. It was so clear. There wasn't even any like razor clams or gapers or stuff like that. So um, yeah, I moved off to a different beach and then we started actually finding stuff like the scallop and that big lobster was something else. I was actually like had my eyes sex when I'm looking for bass when I'm foraging. Is I'm looking for a blue line in the water basically because the bass look blue. And uh, I'm not looking for lobsters but all I seen was his claw up like that. Literally, oh, sorry it was on my left. Down to my left near the rock and it was uh, yeah, looked, turned out to be a giant male lobster. Mmm. And tastes good too. Mmm. So I won't leave the video any longer, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. There's gonna be plenty more to come. It's big tides at the moment, and I'm going day and night. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you enjoy it, make sure to uh, check out the description for any links for merch and stuff like that. I really appreciate you watching. It's Mash Fishing, baby. Woo! Mmm, that's how good.